Welcome everybody. Happy Wednesday. Let's see who's here. Deborah says good morning. Michelle, hello everyone. Nicole says hello. Lisa, hi. Good morning, Rachel. Hello, Song. Nice to see ya. Hi, Melinda. Hello, April. Hi, Mimi. This is Piston. Hey, buddy. Um, you guys got to meet Piston a little bit on one of my recent videos. I did an unboxing video because I had a handful of Amazon wishlist things come through. Um, so I figured why not just do a little live, not live, why not do an unboxing video and say thank you uh, to everybody. And then Piston got to try on his new clothes and he got to try his new treats. So thank you guys very much. Hi, P Lisa says hi. Ah, Tam, happy morning to you all. Good morning, Debbie. If this is your first time with me, my name is Jackie Mancuso. We're going to talk about astrology. We're going to pull some oracle cards. Uh, I guess we'll just get into it today. I don't really have much. So, um, greetings, Jackie. Before we get started... Today, I do want to mention that I sent out an email this morning with the link to my spiritual toolboxes. Um, I talked about these boxes on Monday, as well as I've made a separate video on YouTube talking about them. So I'll put all the links in today's YouTube description. Um, but today and tomorrow allows you the ability to choose a box. Then moving forward, the boxes will be sent at random. So there's also a link on my link tree right at the very top for more information on that. However, good morning, Kay from Phoenix. Good afternoon, Lucy from wet and windy England. Today we're here to discuss a square between Jupiter and the sun that will be exact tomorrow, September 12th. Let me see how hot this coffee is before I start talking. Mm. Still really hot. Okay, so the sun tomorrow will be at 20 degrees of Virgo. Jupiter will be at 20 degrees of Gemini. The sun represents how we shine, the light that we bring into the world. Jupiter represents our growth and expansion, how we become bigger, how we become more vast. And then this square aspect brings tension into the mix. So Jupiter is over here imposing his desire to expand onto the sun. Jupiter saying, it's time to grow, it's time to expand, it's time to open your mind because Jupiter is in Gemini. Gemini is the sign directly related to our mind, related to our thoughts, how we process information. So Jupiter has entered, uh, well, Jupiter entered Gemini in May of this year, and he typically spends about a year in each sign. So how much have you expanded your mind since May? Do you have a different <laughs> worldview, mindset, outlook on life, perspective since May? Uh, I feel like a lot of us do, right, in one way or another. Hello, Kiana. Um, what you've missed is that we're talking about the Sun and Jupiter squaring tomorrow. Sun at 20 Virgo, Jupiter at 20 Gemini. So these upcoming few days, today, tomorrow, Friday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe. Um, <laughs> I was trying to do astrology math. Um, it probably could have been for the last few days. I would give it a week, right? With Thursday being in the middle. So what, about a week. Um, you might be challenged to be in a way that utilizes these new mindsets that you've been working on. So it's less about acting like you have this new mindset. And it's more about being. The sun is just how you be. It is how you shine. It is the light that you are without having to try. So the sun receiving a square from Jupiter and Gemini. This can feel like pressure to shine differently 
in a more expanded way. Jupiter in Gemini and the Sun in Virgo are both ruled by Mercury. Mercury rules both Gemini and Virgo. And Mr. Mercury has just finished his retrograde shadow today. He is coming out of his shadow today. So there is clarity here with this pressure to be in a more expanded mindset. So I'm sensing that you may be put into a situation where you would benefit from communicating in a way that's different than a past version of yourself would, right? You may be given an opportunity to speak more clearly about your expectations of yourself, of the other. You might be given an opportunity to speak more clearly about your desires, about what you truly think about something. There's something else coming to mind. Um, you might be given an opportunity to ask more questions. Um, to, yeah, to be in a situation where you can tell, like, man, I don't like the way that this is going. Let me ask, is this really going how I think it's going? Or am I making this up in my mind? Right? Good morning, Wanda. Um... So whatever opportunity, right, to expand your communication, it might be a little uncomfortable. Um, it might be time to put on your big girl pants. And I was wondering if you guys know that feeling when you're in a situation um, and you, you're you ready to go into your automatic response, whatever your automatic way of handling X situation is, but there's that little voice inside of you that says, F this. <laughs> It's time to do it differently. And then you gather that courage and then you just say it, what you know needs to be said. And then you like, oh my God, it feels so good. I'm so glad I said that, you know? I love that feeling. It's the feeling of like, enough is enough. I've heard this too many times. I've been put in this feeling too many times. I don't want this pattern anymore. So this square can help you find that feeling of enough is enough. And it's your free will that is going to decide if you speak your truth or not. This may be specifically related to something that you have reviewed during Mercury's retrograde, as well as throughout his shadow phase. Um, Mercury's real, real prominent, prominent in this square, right? Because Jupiter and the Sun are both in the signs that are ruled by Mercury. And I think it's so super interesting that this square is happening the day after Mercury finishes his shadow, after his whole retrograde phase. Um, so this pressure to expand and be bigger might have to do with some stuff that's been happening. Um, and I'll give you some exact dates if you want to ponder, right? So Mercury entered his shadow at first on July 16th. Stationed retrograde on August 5th, stationed direct on August 28th, and now he's exiting his shadow on September 11th. So middle of July to middle of September, over the last two months, what was the main focus of your thoughts, right? Specifically really hot in August when the retrograde was happening, uh, but specifically over the last two months, what have you learned about yourself? who you are, what you deserve, how valuable you are. Over the last two months, what have you learned about what you desire? And what have you learned about how you are of service to the world, to your friends, to your family, and to yourself? How are you of service? What do you want? We're gonna use two different decks to ask two different questions in regards to Jupiter squaring the sun. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Emily. Nice to see you guys. Um, I just put two and two together. We had Kay join and she said she's from Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona is probably going to be one of my first stops. It keeps coming up, keeps coming up. Uh, for those who don't know, I am 
in the process of transitioning into life on the road. Um, I'm ready, ready to buy a motorhome, ready to get going, take my dog, live on the road, talk more astrology to you guys because I will be secluded, not away from people, <laughs> or I'll be secluded away from people so I won't be so distracted by people. <laughs> I just talk astrology for hours and hours on end every day. Good morning, Andriana. Um, so we are asking, we're going to start with these dragon oracle cards. It's been a hot second since I've used the dragon oracle cards. Um, and what is so interesting is Piston just got a dragon toy from Christine, right? So thank you, Christine. Got a dragon here. Uh, we've got my dragon. I decided to pull him out today to hang out with us. I was with Jackie Price when I bought this. That's right. Check that out. Um, and... This is my dragon um, as a whole. There's a whole video on this dragon. Yeah, a lot of dragon energy. Uh, 20, or the, we're in the Chinese year of the dragon also. Just a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of dragon stuff. Debbie is also from Phoenix. Hi, Michelle, my bell. Michelle is drinking dragon tea, of course. Jackie and we're seeing each other today. Yeah, whole, more dragon stuff. I guess uh, you're my dragon person. Lucy loves dragons. Cool. So we're going to use this dragon oracle. Um, and we're going to ask, how are we being asked to expand our being? Jupiter square the sun is expanding how we be. How we just are. Without having to dry. How are we being asked to expand our being? So feel free to send your energy into this deck. We always do group readings here. How are we being asked to expand our being? I will allow three cards to fall out of the deck for us. And then the whole reading is for everybody. Wow. <laughs> uh, drop some cards. Wow. The whole reading is for everybody here. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the back of the cards after all three have fallen out. And I invite you to use your intuition to see if any of the cards speak to you in a different way. Um, there is no right or wrong way to intuit your cards, right? If something feels different, if something in your physical environment changes when I hold up a certain card... Um, that could mean that that card really wants to talk to you today. If nothing changes, then the whole reading holds equal importance for you. Um, but, you know, the typical intuitive things like hearing a ringing in your ear or... <laughs> I forget what else the, real, the stereotypical intuition things are. Uh, but if anything changes, right? Like if you cough, if you fart, if you sneeze, if your dog makes a noise, if your kid calls you, if you get a text message, if like anything changes, that's how I pay attention to intuition. So how are we being asked to expand our being? I'll show you the backs of the three cards. You tell me in the chat which cards are resonating with you. Hello, Elena. Here's the back of card number one. The back of card number two. And the back of card number three. How are we being asked to expand our being? Feel free to let me know in the chat which cards you're working with, and I'll show them one more time just in case. Here is the back of card number one. Back of card number two. And the back of card number three. Let's see who is working with which cards. Isn't that the cutest dragon? The toy? It is. And that toy came from, we used the dragon oracle, I think. There was some dragon energy. Piston was like, Mom, I need a dragon toy. 
Jackie, one. Jennifer, one. Lisa, three. Sarah, one. Lucy, three. Joe, one. Deborah, one and two. Michelle, three. Violet, 108, came in at two, so two must be mine. Lucy, one. Stomach gurgle. Three, third eye tingling. Cool. Christine, all holding equal value today. Deborah, literally the second time my daughter texted simultaneously with your drawing this week. That's awesome. Maybe she needs to be invited to the space to join us. <laughs> Emily, two. Nicole, one. Chantel, all. DM, two. Nancy, two and three. Jess, one and two. Mimi, one. When I joined the live today, the timer was one, one, one. And I immediately thought about the cards. That's awesome, Mimi. Tracy, one and two. April, two and three. Michelle, my bell, two for sure. Kay, two and three. Deborah, yeah, you want to invite her? Wanda, three. Andriana, all. Melissa, all three gave the feeling of falling. That's interesting. It's expanding. Maybe you're expanding your landing, right? You're expanding um, your capacity to cushion your own fall. It's fitting. Tell me about it. Um, yeah. The more I, so I kind of like hermit away from people, to be honest. Like I have my clients that I work with. I have one friend. <laughs> I have two friends right now. <laughs> Um, and I really don't like talk to people, but I hear through other people about other people's lives. I feel like a lot of people are going through like super huge changes right now. Huge. There's a lot of stuff going on. And yeah, Kiana mentioned a little bit ago that they were coming up on eclipse season. But even aside from that, like something about these last two months, it's everywhere. And it's not even like, oh yeah, I'm getting promoted at my job. It's like, um. I'm going to move across the country. Uh, I lost my job. I lost this person in my life. Like, they're big tower moments. Um, it's all around. It's all around. So just know that you're not alone going through these falling tower moment. What is life? Like, it's happening to everybody. Uh, so let's talk about that kind of stuff here. Andriana, yup. It's definitely with so many people. You are correct. Michelle, yup. Kiana, yes. All of the above for me, and even my fur baby on Sunday. I know, I know, I know. There's so much change, so much change. But we are being asked to expand our being. How? Card number one brings us the royal blue and gold dragon. Strengthens you to stand in your power with wisdom. Awaken to your own majesty. Wear your cloak of power with pride. Royal blue and gold are the colors of majesty, dignity, and illuminated achievement. Royal blue and gold dragons carry these qualities and prompt us to stand in our magnificence and true power. These fifth dimensional dragons come to us when they see royal blue and gold in our aura, indicating that we hold wisdom with power in perfect balance, which has been earned from our connections with the golden era of Atlantis. We may have been incarnate or in spirit at that time, but we were living or serving on a higher path. The dragons will swirl around us, reminding us who we truly are and breathing light into our energy fields to reawaken our ancient gifts and talents so that we can utilize them once more in service. They will re-energize our cloak of power and wisdom so that we can wear it with pride. A royal blue and gold dragon is lifting up the gifts and talents you carry in your aura. It is breathing courage, support, and dignity into you so that you can wear your cloak of power and wisdom with pride. Most important of all, it is awakening you to who you truly are. It is enabling you to radiate your special light. This dragon is always with you. It holds your sword of truth, so Archangel Michael can enable you to speak and act with truth and honor at all times. It roars at those who try to diminish you, 
and befriends those who empower you. You have all the support you need to teach divine majesty by example. So if card number one resonated with you, how are we being asked to expand our being? Uh, step into your power. That's such like a cliche spiritual saying, but hardcore right now. You're wise. You're powerful. Uh, own it. It's time to own it. It's time to utilize it. It's time to use it for good, right? Stop being ashamed of this power that you hold. Stop second guessing the gifts that you have and just use them, okay? Uh, this also brings up, okay, right, so it's talking about um, truth, which came up on Monday, right? Monday's card one was that shaker, truth, speak your truth, get your truth out, okay? More of that with Archangel Michael. I know Archangel Michael came up on Monday because I told a story about that old man Mike that was my dad, <laughs> that channeled my dad. This is card number one, Emily. A uh, lot of recurring themes coming on. So speak your truth because of how powerful you are. Uh, if you're into the archangels, it seems like Michael is calling to work with us right now. How are we being called to expand into our being? Remember how powerful and wise you are and don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. We're gonna stick with that. That was card number one. These cards are all sorts of out of order. Deborah says, bullseye. Why is it that we are ashamed to step into our power? You know, I'm working through, I'm working through a lot of that right now. Uh, I think I, I can't remember how much I shared. Sunday, I had a whole, I had like two hours of releasing some stuff. I had a few hours on Sunday of like trying to find my innate value. Like, why can I not see my value? I can mentally see it, but like, why is it so hard to feel it? Um, and actually card number one is the one that pulled at me today. So very interesting. Very interesting. I wonder if the other two cards are going to help us figure out how to step more into our power because we're all super, super powerful. We're all super, super wise in our own way. Kiana says, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Card number two. How are we being asked to expand into our being? No. How are we being asked to expand our being? It's just what you be. It's not what you try. I think it's because we are never told we have it and to trust it. That's true. A lot of the messaging all around is you got to try harder. You got to do better. You're not doing enough. You got to do more. Card number two brings us the black dragon. Cocoons you so that your divine potential grows. Meditate, reflect, undergo a metamorphosis. Fifth dimensional black dragons are powerful. They only come to us when we are ready to nurture a new idea or concept that will enable our divine potential to grow. Uh. Black is the ultimate divine feminine color. The shade of mystery and magic, of secrets and hidden hopes. When we are prepared to surrender to the black dragons, they will cocoon us in silky black energy. And as we rest within this safe, dark space, they will enable the new to develop within us. Eventually, we will emerge like a butterfly, having undergone a profound metamorphosis. Choosing this card suggests it is time to rest, for it is during such moments of relaxation that divine projects... <clears throat> It is during such moments of relaxation that divine projects, creative ideas, or a new way of thinking are conceived. In times of peace and stillness, fresh seeds and ideas can grow. The mighty black dragons wish to create a dark cocoon for you now so that the new can germinate and sprout. You are asked to accept their assistance for it will serve your spiritual growth. Take time to meditate or reflect, and the dragons will surround you with their breath, 
This will allow the opportunity that is being presented to you to take root. When you are ready, the black dragons will help you to nurture the new growth. Ask them to help you hold your vision until it comes to glorious fruition. They will also be working with you in your sleep state, and you may be aware of their presence, so acknowledge their help. Expect to be different and be ready to spread your wings. So how are we being asked to expand our being? Pause, pause, and let it happen for you. This is giving me Four of Swords energy. Four of Swords, you take a break, you relax, and the, the energy that you've already initiated by your thoughts, by your desires, by your, your actions, like sometimes you need to chill and allow the universe to catch up with you. That's kind of what I'm feeling with this Black Dragon card, especially coming off of the card one with all this wisdom and power that you hold. It's in there. And if you keep acting, acting, looking for it, searching for it, going, trying to prove, it's not going to show up. It's not going to show up. There was something that came in the beginning also. Oh, oh, so these black dragons come to us when we're ready to nurture a new idea or concept. This whole Mercury retrograde has been around your heart's desire. We've had, because um, Mercury retrograded through Leo, Leo represents the heart. So our thoughts were reviewing what our hearts desire. Um, that was like the whole premise of this Mercury retrograde, in my opinion, as well as having Jupiter in Gemini, expanding our mindset. And then we also had Mars. Yeah, we did have Mars in Gemini. We had a Jupiter-Mars conjunction. And at that time, it was probably about a month ago, I remember talking about like, you really want to start acting on this desire that you're uncovering during Mercury retrograde. So now what's happening is these cards are telling us you have it in you. Whatever you desire, if you are so super powerful and all you got to do is say that's what I want and then step back and let it happen and let it unfold for you. Uh, a lot of comments on card two. Michelle My Bell says, cuddle right up. Yep, Kiana House of the Dragon. Nancy has two big black cats. Remember I told you guys that I had that separation from the wolf and I knew that I was some sort of feline? I asked to be shown what feline, and the next day I saw three different black cats. So I'm toying with that. Don't know if I like it yet. Toying with it. Emily said, ha, I was recently told I have strong black moon Lilith, more black feminine energy. There's a lot of stuff going on in the sky right now with black moon Lilith. I don't get into the asteroids as much as Molly McCord. I've recommended this video to so many of my clients recently, but Molly McCord recorded a video in July, July or August. It's uh, about black moon Lilith. Um, and what she's doing over July, August, September. A lot of feminine energy clearing. There's a lot of, um, oh my gosh. It's a lot of recognizing the feminine energy in your life that has not been serving you. It's a lot about recognizing the feminine uh, disempowerment, either within yourself or in your awareness. Uh, it was powerful. It was huge. Um, so Molly McCord... Dark Moon Lilith, Black Moon Lilith. She starts the video by describing the difference of all the different Liliths that there are. Nala, that video is on YouTube. So I would um, just search Molly McCord Lilith. I typed it in the chat. There's two different videos. Um, and it's, it's the one that does not talk about Sedna. There's one where it's Lilith and Sedna. The one that I'm referring to is just a, a Lilith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good morning, Carrie. Jess says, wow, 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 with this one. Yeah, it feels like resting is doing nothing. And I have a story about that. I have a story about that. Denise, lean in. Kiana, that was the tarot card of the week for my astrology, the Four of Swords. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Michelle, my bell led by faith, not by sight. 
let things unfold in our favor. Emily, that resonates a summer of reclaiming feminine energy. Tell me about it. Here's a quick little anecdote. Jackie left her marriage. Jackie was in a very... Um, Jackie put herself... I don't know. Jackie was in a very mm, masculine place in my marriage. I was much effort. I was exerting much effort. Um, what was this card talking about? Because there was something that made me realize. Uh, so I, like, I've been trying to grow <laughs> this work, this line of work that I do. I've been trying to grow my life. I've been trying to grow just a whole bunch of stuff. And I was efforting, efforting, efforting. Why isn't it happening? Why isn't it happening? What if I put more hours in? What if I do this? What if I try this? And effort, effort, effort. And like, it was at a stagnant. Um, other life things happened. I detached. I'm now in a place where I am truly able to rest. Like I, there's a lot being done for me in the place where I am right now. And I am realizing my regalness and my power <laughs> in this world. And like, I'm working through a whole bunch of guilt, right? Oh, you want to do this for me? And I don't need to pay it back right away. I'm sorry, what? So I'm in this place where I get to rest and I am feeling so much more creative than ever before. So much more creative. It's the, it's very feminine. It feels very feminine. It's more chaotic. I don't have to deal with the structure of the day as much as I was. And I'm noticing that the more chaotic I'm able to be, the more nuts and wacky my feminine can be, the more magic comes out, the more the more, um, yeah. So that's that. Carrie, tell us your story. Yay. Good for you. And Emily or April says, agree. Ease is the key. Open to receiving. Ease is the key. And I was looking for it for so long and then I couldn't find it where I was. So I had to go elsewhere which I'm still working through. It's a whole, it's a fun, it's a fun journey that I'm on. Fun journey that I'm on. I hope you guys are learning from it. We don't have to chase. We can be the magnet, 100%. 100%. It's fun. Card number three. How are we being asked to expand our being? Recognize your power. Rest. Card number three brings us the sunshine yellow dragon. Helps you to help animals. Serve animals. Heal, respect, and understand them. We share our planet with a great variety of creatures who are all on a soul journey, just as we are. Like us, animals come from a myriad of star systems and planets. They all incarnate on Earth to experience, learn, teach, and serve. Our task as humans is to cooperate with, look after, and learn from the animal kingdom. Fifth dimensional sunshine yellow dragons work with Archangel Flei, F H E. L-Y-A-I, Flei, the angel of animals. They send bursts of sunny yellow light into auras of those of us who love and honor animals and help us to assist and heal all creatures. They are currently working on... Assiduously? Uh, uh, I'm the best with words. They are currently working assiduously to touch the hearts of those who need to understand how to treat animals with respect. They also bathe animals in their sunshine yellow light to soothe and heal them so that they can fulfill their soul destiny. Drawing this card invites you to open your aura and allow sunshine yellow dragons to pour light into you, containing the keys and codes to understand at a profound level all the creatures of this planet. Then send these dragons to all humans who need to change their relationship with animals. See the minds and hearts of these people 
blazing glorious yellow as they expand their perspective and see animals for who they truly are. It is also important to visualize all the animals in the world being touched by sunshine yellow dragons and lighting up with hope. Be a sunshine yellow bridge of light along which these dragons can travel to help animals everywhere. You will accrue good karma as you assist your fellow creatures. How are we being asked to expand our being to send healing to the animal kingdom? To heal the, the beings around us who are here to just serve us. Um, I have a track on Insight Timer. It is me reading a channeled message from Archangel Metatron regarding cats and dogs and their role on this world. Um, how are we being asked to expand our being by sending healing to animals through helping animals, right? If there's someone in your life that you feel mistreats an animal, send them yellow light. We forget how much power we have in the energetic intentional realm. Send yellow light to the person that you wish was treating animals with more care and respect send that yellow light, send those yellow dragons to the animals that you believe are being mistreated because animals are here to be guides. They are guides. Something that I've been doing a lot lately, um, I no longer have a fenced-in backyard, so I walk piston way more than I ever have, and I let him guide me. We go for walks. I don't care where we go. I let him tell me what way we're turning, and he's taken me to some pretty cool places, right? One of my things right now is collecting feathers, um, and many times we have taken a turn that I wouldn't have turned. And then like I see a, a hawk or like a really cool crow or I find feathers or something. Um, I've been letting Piston guide me. So the animals on this planet want to expand us. They're here to help us expand. It's, mm, yeah. But I love how this card touched on... Um, when, because I, if you see others treating animals the way that you wouldn't, ask these sunshine yellow dragons to go, go help. Go help. Good morning, Tatiana. Ah, Christine, of course I love the sunshine yellow dragon. Yeah, of course, Christine. Thought about you immediately. Can you spell the angel's name again, please? Yes. Mm. The angel is F H E L Y A I, and I just typed it in the chat as well. With great care and perseverance. Michelle loves Metatron. Chantel, I've been observing. Oh, thank you so much, Lucy, for typing that. Chantel, I've been observing my cats, and what I've learned is that they can just be. They bathe in sunshine without thought and play when they sense you're feeling down. I love that. Um, I said that about the dogs um, at one point. I remember I was still in my old house and I was like, Piston can just lay there on the couch. And I look at him and I'm like, oh my God, you're so cute. Here's a treat. Oh my God, look at you just being you. Let me pet you. Let me give you love. How come they get to be like that and we don't? We can learn from them, you know? Uh, Ted Andrews the author of Animal Speak and many other great works. Uh, Ted Andrews, I think it was in Animal Speak that he was talking about, he had multiple dogs and his dogs would help him act the way that he wanted to act, that like his mind wouldn't let him act. So it was something like one of the dogs was more playful and one of the dogs was more like restful or whatnot. And I'm paraphrasing the story that I read years ago. Um, but like if, like, Ted would be, like, hard at work, and then he'd look over and see that his dog is just relaxed, super relaxed. Okay, maybe it's time for me to relax, you know? Or he'd be super hard at work, and then the one dog comes and brings him a toy. All right, it's time to wrestle. It's time to play. Thanks for pulling me out of my mind, you know? Animals help us in those ways also. Lisa says, the little deer in that card looks a bit like my little dog. Aww. April, this resonates as I pulled that card months ago, and it's sitting on my desk as a reminder. Love it. Love it, love it. 
Christine says Archangel Ariel is the angel of nature and protects animals. Chantel, animals 100% live in the present moment too. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, Shauna Ray. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. April was called to adopt a puppy during COVID. I let my hubby name him. His name is Apollo and he helped us get through the pandemic and soothed us so much. They are little balls of magic. And um, yeah, yeah, I love animals. Always have, always will. So uh, we asked, how are we being asked to expand our being? General message, remember how powerful and wise you are. Let that come to you through resting as well as allowing animals to guide you, right? Doing what you can in the energetic realm to send these sunshine yellow dragons to these animals. Let the dragons do the work, okay? You don't have to effort through life. Black Dragon says, you don't have to effort through life. Stand in your power. Your power lies in the ethers. We think that the 3D has so much power. The 3D ain't shit. <laughs> the 3D ain't shit. I guess maybe that's the feminine part of us, right? The feminine part of us has so much energy in the ethers and we all are masculine and feminine, right? We all have both. This reading is saying it's more ethers. That's what I'm getting. Hardcore. Kiana says, ah, my husband and I used to have an Apollo. Aw. If there is so much power in the ether, where do those that we have lost live? In the ether. Where can we communicate with those that we have lost? In the ether. We can directly communicate with them to help them, to ask them to help us. We're going to pull one more card from one more deck. So let me see how I can relate this. Sun square Jupiter in signs that are both ruled by Mercury. So we are expanding our mind. We're going to be put up to a test where we have to uh, be in a way that is through this expanded mindset. So I'm going to use the 22 Archangels card, <laughs> a deck, to ask which mindset is in the driver's seat. Which mindset is in the driver's seat of this expansion? Does that make sense? So feel free to send your energy into these cards. We're asking for one more card. Which mindset is in the driver's seat of this expansion? If you guys have been enjoying today's session, if you would like to offer an energy exchange in the form of a donation, they're always appreciated. You guys can donate right here on Insight Timer or in my link tree. I have a few different links. Um, currently, I am raising money to buy an RV. That's where I'm at. I'm trying to raise a whole bunch of money uh, by October 1st. I would love to purchase this RV October 1st. My God, would that be amazing? Um, so there's a donation link directly specifically to help me purchase this motorhome and get on the road and go be fun and even more interesting. Could you imagine Jackie Mancuso more interesting? Crazy. Um, so that's my goal right now is to get on the road as soon as possible. There's also... Um, links for PayPal and Venmo if you would just rather do that. But I appreciate you guys being here. If you haven't yet followed me on Insight Timer, consider doing that uh, so you can be updated when I post my new classes. And likewise, if you want to support this RV dream, I'm in the middle of <laughs> selling off my items. I've put together a bunch of like surprise mystery woo-woo tool boxes, spiritual tool boxes with my tried and true spiritual tools that have got me to where I am. Um, 
today and tomorrow, you can pick your box if you want to buy one. And then moving forward, it's going to be like a surprise grab bag box. So head to my link tree. The first link is about that if you want more information. And then, um, yeah, I, I post all of my replays onto YouTube for you guys to watch afterwards. And I'm going to put all the links in the YouTube video as well. Just letting you know. Just letting you know. Shauna Ray used this deck this morning. Of course you did. Shauna Ray loves that motorhome dream. Thank you. Elizabeth, are you moving then into the RV? So that's my long-term goal. Uh, and long-term in Jackie's world might be two months. <laughs> um, my plan, yeah, is to just live in this class A motorhome. Big boy. Big boy. There's a picture of me um, all over my socials. I put, it's right here. This is the one I want. This is a sun cruiser. This is a big boy. Um, plan is to, yeah, just live in it and travel and go and see the states and be and explore and have freedom. Learn, grow, expand, you know? Elizabeth, my husband is staying in our old place. He is no longer a part of my story in this way. In this way. I had to, um... Detach to get to where I want to go. Thank you, Kiana. So, which mindset is in the driver's seat? We're gonna see which Archangel can tell us about the mindset that's driving this expansion. We have Raziel, the inner workings. There are hidden truths below the surface. Dig deeper. Raziel's name means secrets of God, and he is the angel who governs all the sacred laws and workings of the universe. This incredible angelic being is dedicated to those who want to live with purpose and leave a legacy of healing on the earth. If you are someone who feels that there are unseen spiritual laws governing your life, or if you want to have a deeper, more personal understanding of God, the universe, and all things spiritual, Raziel is the angelic guide who can help you take that deep soul dive. Your spiritual gifts and talents are beginning to blossom, right? Your wisdom is right here, okay? Your spiritual gifts and talents are beginning to blossom, but in order for your life to come into greater alignment, it's important for you to dig below the surface. Pluto retrograde in Capricorn, say what? This is a time to uncover truths, knowledge, and anything else that is being hidden from sight, including your own life, including in your own life. Angels want you to understand that the spiritual work isn't just about learning or reading. It's also taking a deep internal excavation where you begin to see that all you have faced, learned, and overcome is part of a greater unfolding that allows you to live with meaning and purpose. This isn't a time for you to hold back. Lean into your gifts with confidence, knowing that they are taking you toward an even more aligned experience on Earth. If you are feeling any resistance at this time, it shows that you want to make a difference and are concerned about doing things right. This awareness is what will lead you to greater knowledge and the expression of the talents that will help you heal others. So which mindset is in the driver's seat of this expansion is just truth, innate truth of your spirituality. The truth of the power that you hold because you are who you are. Um, I'm sitting with a lot with this one. Personal things are going through uh, my mind. Um, uh, 
This, I feel like this first card is the epitome of the reading today. This is all about uncovering your power, uncovering your gifts, and realizing that that, it is your innate power, your innate wisdom that is driving this expansion. You know where you're going. And when I say you, I mean the uppercase you your soul, your energy, your being, right? This isn't ego. This isn't your mind. You are more than your person, right? Whatever your name is. Like, I am not Jackie. I'm using Jackie as a meat suit in order to accomplish these things, okay? I, underneath Jackie, my soul, my energy, has gifts, as do you, capital U. We're being asked to find those, to own them, to utilize them, to stop being ashamed of them, to stop being afraid of them. <sighs> Does that make sense? I'm gonna tell a little bit of a tangent and then I'm gonna go back and read your comments. So, <laughs> uh, I told you guys about Matt. Uh, I'm, I'm staying with a friend. His name is Matt. It's a companion. That's how we're, we're saying this, companion. Uh, Matt is a magical man and he was normal BJ before Jackie. He's been this normal person his whole life, right? Just, just, but like he knew that there was something under there and then it wasn't until, here's Jackie. You're magical. Come on, let's, let's play with this. This is fun, right? Uh, Matt picked the decks for today. Uh, and that was a first for me, letting someone else pick the decks, and I think it was spot on. Uh, Matt's a magical man. The other day, we were just chilling, just chilling, kind of looking at each other, and uh, we started seeing each other shapeshift. I was on no drugs at all. <laughs> I was under the influence of nothing but life, and we were gazing into each other's eyes, watching the other shapeshift. It was more age-based, it was more young to old to different forms of people. It was super cool, super cool. Never seen anything like that in a sober mindset, you know? I've taken medicine a few times and I've seen stuff like that and I understand like, okay, like I'm tapping into something different here, but like that happened just on Sunday, just a random Sunday chilling. Um, it was mind-blowing. It was mind-blowing. It was fun. It was powerful. Um, and it was cool to have that happen with this normal person that I am in company with right now as well. So there are, there's so much underneath that is trying to come up, right? We are this energy that has created this. This is all changeable. Everything is changeable. It's just atoms and molecules that bounce against each other. It's not real. You, you are real. And everything that you create is your reality. I don't know what I wanted to say about that. Oh, look at Michelle, my bell got goosies. Matt, the magician. I call him magic, magic mountain man. That's what I call him. Just so fun. So interesting. Michelle Mybell, when I was talking about the RV, said spread those wings. I love this for you. Elizabeth, what? No way, Jackie. I missed you. Congrats. The balloon. Thanks. Hi, Linda. Hope you're doing well as well. Denise, ascension. Mm -hmm. How do you ascend? How can you ascend if you're holding on to your limiting beliefs? How can your being become lighter if you are trying to hold on to what you've had, it's impossible. You have to let things go. What came up when I said things? Because that could represent so many things and whatever came up is the thing that you need to let go of. Did you think physical things? It's time to declutter. Did you think mindset? It's time to let go of mindsets. Did you think about something else? When I said things, what is it? Shauna Ray Truth. Yes. Tara, thanks for sharing that. So fun. 
Tatiana, amazing experience. Very happy for you. Christine, wow. Um, I've been slowing down so much in the last month and a half. I've been slowing down. It might not seem like it to myself sometimes. Um, but yesterday we went for a walk and um, I found a piece of wood, right? Like I've just been like, I don't know, I just pick up nature and I look at it. And I was walking with this little chunk of wood and um, it was cool and I just liked the way that it was like rounded and it had like cool grain on it and that's it. And he was on the phone. So I was just playing with this piece of wood, distracting myself being. Um, and then I, you know, I was like, oh, cool. This looks like a ghost holding a baseball bat. And it did. And I like, it looked like a ghost like winding up and it was cool. And I was just playing with it and I was looking at it from different angles. Like, oh, interesting. Kept walking, kept playing with it, just like fidgeting with it, breaking off some of the bits. And then I turned it over on the other side. Whoa, there's a rabbit. Clear, clear as day. It's a rabbit. Oh, cool. Interesting. Wow. Um, and then it was processing in my mind that like the, I'm a very fast person. I love to do things fast. Mercury in Aries for anyone who else. <laughs> it's Mercury in Aries. I'm fast to process, fast to move on. It's just go, go, go. If I would have picked up that piece of wood and saw the ghost and said, oh, cool, threw it in the woods. I would have missed out on seeing the depth that was in it. So for me, it was like a physical representation of when you sit with something, if you don't just blast off into something else, you can get a lot more from it. So that was that was like an affirmation for me to slow down with things. Just interesting. Just interesting. April says, it is safe for us to be powerful. It is. It is. Christine, it's actually amazing to gaze for a long period of time into another's eyes. Um, yeah, I tried it with other people. Didn't get the same result. So I don't know what it was, if it was me at that time, if it was them, if it was the situation, if it was what. But, like, I've done that before and it's never been like that. It was crazy. It was crazy. So... We're being asked to recognize our power and our wisdom. We're going to get there through resting, right? Resting. Stop efforting. And maybe the effort that you do is to send sunshine yellow dragons to animals and to the people who care for animals so that the animals can reciprocate back, right? Animals are here to guide us as well. So which mindset is driving this expansion is truth innate truth not mindset truth i'm pointing to my heart thank you guys for being here if you'd like to offer any type of energy exchange in the form of a donation they are always appreciated um what else was i gonna say i am uh <laughs> I'm always changing. I'm always shifting. I'm always changing. I'm just going to speak for a minute about some ideas that I have to change within my work, just to let you guys know, um, to give you a heads up of what's coming. Deborah says, you are speaking so much depth into my reality with now, letting go, slowing down. Who is driving the transition? Well, you are, right? I've been scripting since the day that we had all those scripting messages. It was August 21st. I've been scripting every night. Um, it is shifted from these are the tangible things that I want. Now it is shifting into this is how I'm feeling. And it feels good because I write it as if it is future. I like my mind thinks it's future, but I'm writing it as if I already have it. And it's easier for my mind to wrap around the fact that I already have these feelings. Just saying. Evolving. How beautiful. Yes, evolving. Things are changing. And it was really hard for me to make decisions about how to change because I don't know what's coming. Okay, so that's where I'm coming from. In a perfect world, I'll be in an RV by October 1st. Is that going to happen? I have no idea. I don't want to close off magic, but I'm also that batshit to allow myself to believe that that's going to happen. If it happens, great. If not, cool. Um, so what I'm thinking is I've been feeling... Mm. I hold back on Insight Timer sometimes because I am questioning if it's worth it. I don't mean that as an attack. 
on you guys or the platform or anything. This is just feelings coming out. Uh, I've been assessing value all around. And there's a part of me that wants to just keep working the amount that I'm working and receive more because I feel like I do a lot. I feel like I do a lot. So my thought, I'm going to try this out in October. I'm going to start the week of October 7th. That's a Monday. Um, and here, I'm just going to, I got to blab for some time. I got to tell you guys the whole process. So I was considering why, why do you guys show up? Do you show up for the astrology or do you show up for the oracle? And what I have deduced is, um, actually Matt said all this, so credit Matt. Uh, when I come here and I talk astrology, the chat is pretty silent. So I believe that you guys value it, but I believe that more of the value comes from the cards because as soon as I start pulling cards, you guys are like, oh, hell yeah, this makes so much sense. Oh my God. Lisa says both. Um, so what I'm going to try to do in October is I'm just going to do one Wednesday. I'm going to try this for a month. Wednesday. I'm going to show up at 8.15, do what we do, but I'm going to do the whole week. So I'm going to come on Wednesday, do a week of astrology, and then pull some cards. Then Monday, Friday at 9 o'clock, so I'm going to shift down a little bit at a different time. 9 o'clock, I'm going to show up just for like 20, 30 minutes just for cards. And I'm going to um, bring some tarot in as well. I'm going to use tarot to guide the reading. So now I use astrology to guide the reading, which I will do on Wednesdays. Monday, Friday, I'm going to pull a tarot card to guide the reading, and then we'll do a card reading Monday and Friday. And I'll try that for a little bit to see how that feels. Um, because there is a part of me that knows that I'm... Uh, I don't know how to say it out loud. It feels like I'm like giving too much, and I'm blocking right? Just like this black dragon, we were talking about that. Like the more you try and effort and put out and go and do, you're not allowing the, the breeze back, the fall back, right? So that's it. That's it. Thank you so much, Emily, for your donation. I appreciate it. Karen, do you still have the three month coaching? I didn't see it on your profile page. I have uh, closed up my autumn I have selected my my um, coaching clients for autumn. That will reopen uh, the first week of January. Winter is going to start the week of January 6th. So if you want a heads up on that, join my email list. Michelle, I come for the whole package, baby. Emily, definitely love the astrology and cards both. Karen, both. Tatiana, both. Lucy, both. Tatiana, I am fascinated with astrology and planning to take an astrology course. I have one on Insight Timer, Astrology 101. Michelle, my belle, your knowledge and insight is truly a gift. I'm glad to be a part of whatever you're throwing out there. Thanks. I'm just, I'm going to try it. Doesn't mean I'm married to it. Um, and there's, yeah, I don't know. There's other ideas in the works, but that's what I'm thinking. And then also, at the same time, vein. Um, and if you guys are in my Embody Astrology Patreon group, I want to have a discussion about this at our meeting tomorrow. Um, so I have this Patreon group as well, where it's been morphing since March, right? It's been morphing. I've been, uh, we meet on a Zoom call and I share my screen so you can see the chart and I talk you through the chart of the upcoming new moon or the upcoming full moon. And I blast deep dives of astrology at you. And then I say, all right, ask me questions about your chart now. <laughs> um, and I was, I was getting this like deer in headlights sense from my people a little bit. And then I was thinking like, maybe, maybe people need some time to process this. So I'm, I'm thinking about shifting my Patreon group as well, where I give you a video, and then the week after that, so you get a week to digest it, then we come back and you're able to ask me questions about your specific chart. So it'll turn into more of a, here's a video, let's meet for a Q&A. Um, and then also that on that Patreon group, I've made a worksheet so that you can dissect 
your chart through the lens of the new moon, through the lens of the full moon. I did see, I saw a handful of responses and they've all been thumbs up so far, but I'd like to hear when we're uh, chatting tomorrow. So yeah, change, I gotta let go. I gotta let go of what's been working. Changing the structure on Insight Timer, guys, is terrifying. I've been doing it this way for as long as I can remember. This is my constant. It is freaking me out to try to change this, but I gotta try. Um, Nancy says love both, but especially the cards. Andriana, yes, I love both. I'm really into astrology since I was 16 and the cards as a perfect way to connect the two. Beautiful. April, all those cards are 5D dragons, which is interesting. These dragons hold 5D frequency and help to transmute all that is holding us back and help prepare our energy bodies for the higher energies now available. When we work with them, our light expands and grows. This is from the guidebook. Yes, April. Love it, love it, love it. Debbie says astrology first. Value the cards too. Christine, of course I'm on vacation that week. I'm going to try it for a whole month. So October 7th until November 1st. Those are the dates that I have playing with right now. So we'll see how it goes. Chantel, both for me, it's the uniqueness of the cards that help the astrology for me. And I'm sure, I don't know. Um, another reason for this, just full transparency. Wow, I feel like I'm not supposed to be sharing this stuff with you guys, but who cares? Another reason of the shift is that I feel like I am working so hard um, and I can't necessarily repurpose my work. That's a, that's a common thing with this kind of, right, I'm live streaming. So what, where else can I put these things that I'm doing? How else can I spread this? When I do this astrology, it's relevant for a few days. <laughs> Done. So how can I take my work and make it evergreen so that I've already done the work and it is valuable and it's not just valuable for a few days. So with these Monday, Friday, where it's just going to be cards, my intention is to make them insight timer tracks so that you can stumble upon them at another date and be like, oh, that's right. This I need this message right now. It has nothing to do with what's going on in the sky today. I just want to hear this message. Um, so that's another thing. Being able to hold the value of my work. Maybe, that, wow, I think I just had an insight. Maybe I feel less valuable because my message is fleeting. I talk about the daily astrology and it's only relevant for right now. You can go back and reflect, but like how much reflection are you really going to do? You got to keep up. There's more astrology coming. It's coming. Wow. Thanks for letting me talk that through with you guys. Thanks for sharing your process. You're welcome. Susanna came in late in time for the last card, though. Looking forward to your tarot readings. Thanks. Tatiana, um, it's intuitive spiritual coaching. <laughs> I talk with people and I help them make life choices. Uh, and I use whatever tools come up that day. Uh, I'm not trained. I didn't take any courses. I don't have any certifications. I just help people. Thanks, April. She says you are supported in whatever direction you take. I think I think I need to take this leap to believe that fully. I believe you guys. I really do. But I, I, I believe you with my brain. I think I need to start believing with my heart. Karen, the combo of astrology and cards is a very unique approach. Sets you apart from other teachers. But we'll keep that on Wednesdays and we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Melinda won't be able to come to the meeting tomorrow. All good. Susan, astrology first. So this would also kind of open up my time. And another thing, I, guys, I have ideas 24-7 and it's um, putting it into action. That's the difficult part for me. Another part of this, if I'm opening up more time, that would allow me. So when I sit down and I make my notes for Insight Timer, that's when I'm at my happiest. That's when I am most like, oh, I could do this all day. And there's often times where I'm like, negating things that I see in the chart because I only have a certain amount of time. 
So the boundary has been nice. It keeps me structured, but I want to spend more time intuiting astrology. So if this is, I don't know how long this will take, if it's going to happen right away, I don't know, but my, what feels good would be to make little nightly astrology videos, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, I don't know, I don't know how long they're going to be, but what I'm foreseeing is me having a chart, intuiting, hey, this is what's happening tomorrow, blah, 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 here's this, here's this, all right, see ya, and I'll do that on a nightly basis because that's fun for me, um, so I'm not going away from astrology. I do understand that everything I do is through the lens of astrology. I'm just playing with how to make it worth my time. That feels, I feel guilty saying that, okay? That's what's going through my brain right now. That feels guilty. To make it worth my time. How effed up is that? That I feel guilty for wanting to make my work be worth my time. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Deborah, your current structure has been a breath of fresh air for me, but I'm sure whatever you are drawn to is what is meant to be. Thanks. Tatiana, do what you're called to do. The reasoning is very sound. Thank you for the validation. Maybe I'm looking for validation. Becca, thank you for including us in your work. Beautiful. Tatiana, very interesting. I will think about your coaching program, but astrology first. Yeah, sign up for my email list um, and you'll be notified with all of that. When that comes back around, I'll probably start... Um, notifying you guys in the beginning of December to get ready for January's three-month package. Elizabeth, I believe we're all having self-worth issues, or better said, balance in our work. You're a gem, Jackie. Thank you for including us in your astrology work. Thanks for being here. Suzanne has your eye on a Volkswagen camper van myself, but the one I want is only available in Europe now. So, want to manifest that it comes to North America and also the money. Wishing you much success on your quest. Thanks, Suzanne. Let's do it together. Let's make stuff appear for us together. Because that's, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. My effort is being placed in the ethers. Jackie says nothing wrong with trying to put a value on your time. That was just an interesting insight that like, wow, I feel like I'm not allowed to do this. How interesting. I don't know. But I'll be back on Monday. On Monday, we are going to talk about mm, the lunar eclipse. <laughs> Monday's going to be a big one. Pisces, lunar eclipse. We are uh, coming into eclipse season. The eclipse is on Tuesday the 17th in the PMs overnight, Tuesday into Wednesday, at least for central time. But anyway, time to stop blabbing. I'll see you guys on Monday. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your feedback, your ideas. Uh, everything that you guys put out is always super, super valuable. That's why I keep coming back. That's why I can't get away from this place. This replay will be on YouTube. Uh, all the links that about everything I talked about today will be on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. Would love if you planned this RV trip with another person. What do you mean, Christine? Are you afraid for me? <laughs> Thank you so much, Melinda, for your donation. That's right. That's right. I always do book dives. Anyone who sends any sort of donation, I dive into a book and I give you... Um, a message that's resonating for you today from this. Christine, please don't be afraid for me. <laughs> I'm good. I don't need your worry. Uh, I'm good. I got energetic protection all the time. I'm untouchable. So are you. Piston will look after her. That's right, Lisa. I'm gonna have Piston with me. He's a big, scary, big bark dog. It's not worry. I know it's love. Anyway, I love you guys. Sending love to all. Namaste. I will see you on Monday. Have a lovely weekend. Sixteen. All good. What up, bitches? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Happy Wednesday.